if there was any competent team to be able to shut him down, it would be this one. And I mean, we often saw, we saw Zombs and Forsaken working together up on the high ground and the ledges uh, up against Misfits actually. And Zebesai had extreme difficulty playing Zombra himself on the attack to actually try and find Forsaken. It was very, very difficult for him to, to access that Zenyatta in towards the back line. And from that position, even Raucus uh, sort of can be joining up on that Ana. There are, three, there are three heroes that could potentially stay quite safe up on that high ground. If now Shadowburn with the Soldier 76, they switched it over, can protect them. I so you. this is, I mean, Too Easy was on Roadhog. He changed it to McCree last second. Zom's going to D.Va. He had such success in the previous round. D.Va can actually be really good against tanks. Maybe this is a thing that works. It's going to be interesting to see if it does work here. I do like the more mixing of D.Va. She is freshly buffed, and I'm not sure everyone has really gone out of their way to explore her limits here just yet. Interesting stuff, though, from Shadowburn. Decides not to go for the Genji, goes for the 76 instead. So we're seeing a more old-school Gibraltar defense come out here now that Soldier has been buffed, and definitely curious to see how it works out. But bear in mind, Zappis is on the Hanzo, and of characters that could insta give a Soldier, Hanzo actually has a lot of outs to do that, so Shadowburn still got to be careful not to get hit to from a log directly to his head, because that could be absolutely terrible for actually holding this point. And too easy now on the low ground there as well, taking a little bit of damage early on, but again, the biotic grenade's being traded here, and Fraggy, well, he's the only one actually affected negatively by that one, and Zom's playing very close now, needs to go up, doesn't want to get desuited, but it's probably an inevitability now with Mafu there as well, able to circumvent that defense matrix. Still, no kills are coming away from it. This is classic NIP. It's very, very hard to grind them down. They're always going to be able to outlast you. Shadowband gets hooked down to the low ground, and he's going to be an object of focus now. With Frankie finding Forsaken, this isn't going to go well for FaZe. No, it's absolutely not. Himsy setting the stage right now. His two picks already in this fight, effectively. Set up Shadow Burn for death. Going after D.Va right now. D.Va just trying to stay alive. Maybe D.Va not going to be able to do it. Himsy again missed that hook, and here comes FaZe. Right back there, right back to Fiction. Nano boost him. Going to bring Himsy on quite a long ride. And him is he going to take him out before dying? The last shot. And while this is going on, Zappas with the Dragon Strike. That is one Hungry Dragon. Eats two. And NIP going to be bringing this right back. They get the point, And spawn point's going to be moving forward. Yeah, really clever use of Dragon Strike there as well. I mean, Zappas made sure he was behind a wall. So there'd be much less notice, of course, for FaZe to realize that there was a Hungry Hungry Dragon that was pelting towards him at a rate of knots. Getting two kills with that one when he's firing it out in the open without, you know, a setup ultimate like you would have from from uh, Zyre and a Graviton Surge, that's ridiculously good. And then he's just going to switch over to Soldier 76, so he's done his job. Hanzo has had the impact he needed to, and Shadowburn forced the Zappos there in the 1v1. Shadowburn going to go down, and that's a little bit rough. They need that muscle from Shadowburn. Now it's going to be up to too easy here to keep things up for FaZe, but Forsaken Factor Fiction actually piling on the top of the payload. It's a little bit of an overextension coming in here from the side. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. From the side of NIP there. So, they're moving in. Now, going towards the next fight, both teams have a lot in their alt banks here. This is actually going to be incredibly pivotal. There's four minutes off the hangar phase. If NIP wins this fight, that is going to be a massive boon. They'll probably give a quick time. If they lose this fight, they might not even get through here at all. A lot, depending on this fight, as both teams very well could go through all of their ultimates. Yeah, again, like I said, there's always a risk in dropping down as defenders here because you guys have to be the ones that make the, the first push and do attack. But Shadowbank going to the back line there as well, having the ultimate. This could be very, very nasty. Two kills are ready for him. Fraggy goes very low, gets his third there on towards Mapu. And this is a viable way to shred tanks, actually. Without a Reinhardt shield in play, if Fraggy gets isolated or neutralized early on, then Shadowburn with the Nano Boost can do a lot. Absolutely, and uh, the one good thing here, though, for NIP is that for NIP, they didn't throw anything into that fight. They just let FaZe throw their ultimates into them. So now, moving forward, they have five ults up, almost six. This is going to be very, very difficult here for FaZe, where really their only out is hoping that Zombs comes in over the top with fireworks. And here comes NIP. They're not wasting any time. FaZe going to have to come in from the back. And here comes the D.Va explosion on the way. How much is this going to get? Sound barriers up. That's going to mitigate some of that. And NIP making the move right now. All in this fight, the Graviton is in. Him's in Frag, you got pick up two, and they are well on their way. Yeah, Transcendence was in play, but it was a little bit of a late um, by the grenade thrown there by Zelfia, which is going to allow the, the rest of the damage to get through there. Transcendence is fine, but if, if you're that Zenyatta and you see your team get biotic grenaded, you can't act because you're obviously channeling that ultimate, and you can't heal either. So that's all the NIP sort of need to break through. Decent time here, four minutes on for the last stage. They're happy enough with that one. Fraggy goes forward and actually manages to catch a bit of an extra kill there as well. And Shadowburn falling, this, this is going to allow NIP to actually set up a little bit, forcing phase away. They'll probably try and take some high ground or something like that, but that's a great result for NIP, who get to make some free progress here after the fact. 
It's excellent for an IP in particular because that's one of the harder areas to get through if the defense is set up. That bend a lot of options for the defense to get in and initiate on you. But FaZe are going to regroup here as six. Too easy to have a dead eye up here pretty soon. Tech are also up. And take a look at Fraggy. Fraggy known for playing fast and loose. Almost plays a little bit too loose there. Barely able to get away with his life. Deadeye comes up for too easy. Gonna zone things back. And he gets Zuppy towards the very end. Was not able to break LOS. And too easy. Going to be a big part of this fight. FaZe moving it forward once more. Yeah, NRP now being forced into a corner here. Eventually, Fraggy has to try and stand and deliver. But Zom's had his number. And he uh, had him taken care of quite comfortably. And here's the thing, right? Ultimates like Deadeye. Ultimates like self-destruct for Anna are a freaking nightmare. You don't have any mobility abilities or invulnerability frames built into your kit. So if you're caught out in the open, there's no way that you're going to survive. You can't dash away, you can't jump, you can't do anything about that. She's often the biggest target to fall to abilities like that. Absolutely. Arma, if she's out of position, she doesn't have a whole lot of tools to get out of it. She can heal herself. That's about it. Do have the Graviton coming in here from the defense right now, but here comes Zappas. Attack Visor on the way. No nano boost in on him uh, just yet. Ana, of course, went down, so he has to back out. Only gets one kill off of that. Not quite what he was looking for. Overall, the tanks of FaZe able to control things there. Yeah, I definitely don't think we want to see nano boost from NIP onto anyone no. but Zappas at this stage. There's a case also, to be made for Fraggy having it if the fighting does get down and dirty. That's a brilliant hook. Zom's getting hooked in. It doesn't amount to much, sadly, but very nicely done by him. He gets himself some free ultimate percentage now as well for that whole hog coming forward. Matthew, though, doesn't have a Graviton, and that is incredibly, incredibly underwhelming Earth Shadow. Fraggy was caught ahead of his team. Forsaken gets hooked in. Might be a consolation to be had here, but I'm not happy with that at all. Also, I need to restate here. I'm pretty sure that last Graviton actually is eaten by D.Va. I might be wrong. We didn't have a view on We were at the other area, but I think Moffat went for the Graviton. It was eaten by Zom, just going back a little bit. So actually really big on Zom's to eat that. And here comes Zom's again. Self-destruct on the way. It's going to be NIP avoiding most of that. They have to go in deep. Shadowburn actually way deep, but blows up Mafu towards the very end. Nano boosted soldier, definitely the new hotness right now in this meta. And it's definitely keeping phase in it as they hold NIP back. Uh, Zappas missed the memo on backing up here as well. I mean, he's, he's, we already see Himsy sort of backing away in towards that room. Going to take a breather now as well. Kind of wants to get the boop on Fact Fiction here and didn't quite get it. Didn't have the angle. Fact Fiction was ready for that one. He wanted to isolate the Reinhardt and the rest of FaZe. Hey, a minute and 12 seconds remaining here. This is looking like a veritable hold coming out from FaZe. And with Too Easy finding Himsy, that's just going to compound problems here for the Finnish side. They need to start to establish some control. They do have a Graviton surge at least. They need to use these playmaking ults now to break the hold. There's so many in the hands of FaZe that managed to hold onto theirs for so long. And here's the key here. Mafu has that Groudson. Has to be careful not to just throw it into Zom's awaiting Korean future vacuum. And that's what Zom's is looking for right now. He's really looking to grab it. And Mafu is aware of it now, so he's holding a little bit back. Doesn't have the freedom to throw down the Graviton as you'd like. And that's the power of D.Va to sort of get in your head in these situations where Mafu, he's still looking for it. He's going to get, he goes behind Zom's. He can't fire it just yet, but finally throws it on the ground, gets it in, and Zappa Zim's here right there for the fall through. And the transcendence was all well and good there for Forsaken, but Fact Fiction and Raw, uh, and Rork has already taken down here. So two of the, the most you know key players on this six-man roster out of the picture. Doesn't really matter who you're healing if you're losing an Anna and a Reinhardt in the process. Now the payload should be getting close to being across the line. Decent Graviton, but only Mappy was really caught there, and Fraggy does get himself a Nano Boost. Forsaken Nano Boosted? I've seen some stuff, ZP. I ain't seen that yet. <laughs> Every now and then it does happen towards the very end. They uh, fully pumped up Zen. Zappas right now over the top, having himself a shooting gallery, just laying in the damage. Absolutely no one that can deal with him. Shadowburn comes with the attack visor, but it's a little bit too little, too late. NIP going to get in here with all of zero seconds remaining. And yeah, for NIP, I think you're satisfied here. Gibraltar is a long map. Okay, if there's any map that you are going to sort of fall before the final hurdle. This is definitely going to be one of them. I think Dorado, to a degree, can seem quite long. But hey, Gibraltar is Gibraltar. They get the map finished, they get three checkpoints, and they can at least guarantee a chance to force a draw uh, if FaZe actually able to finish the map themselves with any sort of time bank. And there's no certainty that that'll even happen here as well, especially seeing, I think, the defensive play from NRP is what I enjoy most from them. If you look on back on maps like Dorado, where they play that forward defense and then they can recoup for that first point, it's pretty impressive, but there's still an opening here for FaZe. Knowing what they can do to teams on this map, knowing what they did to Misfits, they're comfortable on this map, and NRP have to have the wits about them.
FaZe did lose first point do. almost immediately, though. So considering they got it down to zero seconds left, they should be feeling okay. My, I'm wondering if Zom's going to stay on D.Va. Will Shadowbring do Soldier again? It doesn't seem like Genji will work. It doesn't feel like uh, the Hanzo pick that he sometimes plays here will work. Uh, it seems like they will do it. Uh, the other thing I'm considering is will Forsaken play Zen? Considering it is such a long map, not playing Lucio here is a very big risk. The setup here as well for NRP is quite interesting. So they managed to squeeze four people across the gap here, all four of whom will probably try and stay hidden. Now, they can either catch a Genji in a trap here, as a Genji likes to access the, the high causeway and work his way through this opening we're looking at now, or they can just take the entirety of FaZe by surprise and drop down on him. Now, teams used to do this with just a Roadhog, actually, and they'd pincer with a Roadhog from behind, get a hook in and pull someone out. This is a bit more of an advanced approach if they actually do stay up here. Zappos on the May as well is definitely worth noting, but. Fraggy drops down, so we will see a bit of high ground control and the hidden road hide up on the top side here to deal with it. Oh, Zom's going to go in, hooked immediately there as well, and Zappos is going to make sure he can't get away. Nice while there, really a good combo with hook stops. Heroes like D.Va or Reaper from Gangway and MC just laying it on right now. The advanced placement here for the defense absolutely working out. A lot of times defenders to hold it a little bit further back. Not so much this time, and oh my goodness, Himsey with yet another hook moving in. He's going to die for that, and now I wonder if NIP has dug a little bit too deep, because this is going to be an opportunity for FaZe to come right back. It's very rare that we see teams invest lives actually defending so far forward on the map now. And that's obviously because uh, NRP know exactly what they have to do on this map. It's quite clear what their objective is going to be and how they need to hold phase. Where that actually happens though is the question and they tried to do it quite far forward. This is fine because they could reinforce and get back towards the payload for the next fight, but they do need to be careful about over extensions, which have been the one crack in their armor. It was fine except for the part where Zuppe got picked off towards the back. He was a little bit too deep as Ana. Now, Unless Himsey can have some real hero plays, this is going to be very rough. And Himsey, as I say that, is getting those hero plays. Picks off two to equalize things towards the end. Shadowburn is up over the top. He's pretty close to having a tactical visor, but this fight is getting messier before it gets cleaner right now. Shadowburn over the top. He's going to get the tack visor. And Zuppy, having a bad day, runs right in the Shadowburn once more. Shadowburn might have to sell for just one, but overall the defensive NIP actually pulling it back despite Shadowburn's heroics in the backfield. Yeah, he gets dealt with eventually. Zappos finds him. Zappos is very good with mid-air ice spikes, by the way, and this is actually going to have to force FaZe to wait. I don't know about Fraggy using an Earth Shatter for a Lucio and a D-suited D.Va. That might be a little bit better used later on here. I mean, decisions like that are very hard to make correctly on the fly, but again, you, from us, you know, our privileged fly on the wall spectators, it seemed like a little bit of a waste. All right, so Imzy right now is staying here on the ground floor. It looks like we're going to be seeing FaZe coming in up and over the top. They're waiting for it. They're waiting for the right opportunity, perhaps looking for a pickoff. They do have Shadow Burn and 2 over the top. McCree is still good at getting pickoffs, but you see 2 opening up here with the Deadeye, but Forsaken caught all alone over the top. Himsey's flank successful. And I'll see if he can come back and help his team in time as both teams gang into it on top of the payload. Yeah, really nice white fix there from Matthew to deal with too easy on the high ground. That's a good Earth Shadow from Fact Fiction though, and Shadowburn's going to follow up with it up from the top side. It's as easy as that. Easy pickings for Shadowburn is very much just a case of aiming and shooting and hit the prone targets. So and now the payload moving towards his first checkpoint. Good hold for NRP. They don't, I mean, I, I don't know if they really have a great chance to set up a high ground here with Shadowburn harass him as they go, but they managed to bleed a decent amount of time on first. They do bleed quite a bit of time. Phase though, they have to back up a little bit. Shadowburn going to have to concede that from him. While he's conceded it, the defense is going to get their chance to get back in here on the point and set up in a way that they'd like to set up for. And now you look at NIP, they do have four ultimates in their bank. They can just sort of roll in the phase here, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Fraggy getting that nav boost once more, swing the hammer. Nothing Zed can do to get out of this corner. But Fraggy having to back off a little bit did not like how low his health was. Mafa's ground on though, does enough. And Shadowburn just gonna waste the tack visor towards the end through good money after bad. And this is gonna let NIP fully reestablish here, Uber. Yeah, they're gonna have plenty of time now. It's it's not that long a walk really for FaZe to get here, but NIP are gonna be very, very expedient about getting themselves up on that high ground now, especially with the payload where it is. They can set themselves up to have a decent engagement from the top down. And straight away, obviously you can access the top of the shuttle on foot without boosting up. Most of you probably are expert will know that by now he's real grandmasters but and this is a strong position now especially when you bring in a soldier 76 for zappas he switched off the may after that first point all right so we have phase going in through that right room they do have transcend to keep them alive should nip dive in so nip gonna want to hold here over the top whether or not they know that or not is a different story but 
They're holding on top, but FaZe really taking their time going through. Even if they are able to get through here, this is a lot of time being bought here, Uber. Yeah, good little knock off there as well. Um, we, we did see Himzy get knocked from the high ground there by Zoms going through on Diva. That's one, one thing that she's really good at doing. Transcendence comes in there as well, and you can see the Forsaken's hard pressed to actually keep up with the rest of his team. He can't go really forward or back there because his team is split up. He's trying to spread the healing as much as he can. Fortunately, it was enough. The kills are coming in thick and fast. It's Shadow Burn and too easy. The damage deal is getting it done, but Fact Fiction gets two for that fight. And now, they're going to get to that second checkpoint here, and they'll have a decent amount of time. Three and a half minutes here. If they finish the map, they're going to be forcing an overtime at the very least. And this is very, very good for FaZe right now, as far as the time they're setting. Three minutes is plenty of time to go from where they are now to the end, especially as they continue chaining kills like they are. Members of NIP getting caught there off the respawn. And now they're going to have to wait for everyone to come back once more and fight at the second to last bend. And this is a pretty decent area to fight for a team as they're going forward. And Zom's going to be able to sort of dominate the skies here. He's going to look for the fireworks play. Going to throw the Diva ult into the air. And here it goes. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough to hide from this one. But again, the girders are going to be just enough for up here to avoid the explosion. Fraggy's on his own at the moment. He really does get shielded by Mafu. Those two brothers in arms and in blood always going straight forward here. The trades back and forth. It's going to be kind of a fine shadow burn here. And this should be the fight one for Renna. IP. They've got a couple of ultimates to take into the next, which is quite important, especially with big impact ultimates in Earthshatter and Graviton Surge going to be available. This is a decent bank to work on for the for the Phoenix. NIP at least able to give themselves some degree of stability. They've built up their war chest once more. Raggy holding on to the Earthshatter right now in the back line. And he's going in deep, drops the hammer, gets exactly what he's looking for, knocks down four, and he's swinging the hammer into the Scrouts on the sound barrier, though, in Trance, keeping the offense alive, at least for now. And this might be a turnabout here for FaZe. An excellent response to support alts, but the defensive sound barrier coming in could get a little bit grim. Yeah, I mean, that's when uh, NRP needed this defensive sound barrier to even be competitive in the rest of this fight here. Mapu, two quick kills. You can see him working off from the side to find Forsaken and Zombs. The fact of the matter is, a Graviton Surge and an Earth Shatter from NIP got cancelled out by the Transcendence, essentially, from Forsaken. That's a two-for-one trade. You're so happy about that, especially as Zenyatta. So, Sound Barrier was a necessity. A lot of ults, and all of those ults are pretty much used by NIP in that fight to win it. And then we'll take a look at NIP again. It's going to be Fraggy moving forward once more. Going to get taken out by two easy. Just a little bit too ambitious of a dive there. And now FaZe, they're going to be ones pushing it right back. They still have their Reinhardt. They still have their shield tank. Aggressiveness is going to pay off. Mafu's going down. Now too easy. as this fight's breaking down, can really take advantage on the McCree. Getting kill after kill. Looking for Zappus. Zappus is going to take him down before falling, but definitely momentum on FaZe's side. Kaino is such a troll. He has not died on that payload for the last five to six seconds. In fact, Fiction didn't... I couldn't quite figure out why the payload wasn't moving because there was a Lucio crouched on the other side. One minute left here. One minute. That's all it's going to be. And Shadowburn now has resulted with to try and pressure Fraggy back here. Mapu is stuck in the corner here. They've got to respond. They've got to do something. And Himsy starts things off well. He gets on the wood. Raucous. Fraggy's knocked to the ground by the Earth Shatter. The shield though comes in at just the right time. Matt self destructs. Good Herc here. And Zombs, he's going to get Himsy at least. And that was an enormous pickoff by Himsy. Wasn't even a hook to start things off. It was just a raw right click, ending Lucio's life immediately. Zap is going to get the cleanup he's looking for here. And NIP, they might be doing it here, Uber. 35 seconds remaining for FaZe. FaZe had all the time in the world to bring this in. But this last point on Gibraltar, such a pain to get through. Really an advantageous for the defenders if they play things right. Factor Fiction gets hooked by Himsy, and here comes the last gas from FaZe. Yeah, I mean, that hook might have just done it there as well. We'll have to see what the response is going to be like here, because Zops is caught out. He can't get healed from Forsaken right now, and he can't even zoom the adder on towards the point. That option's no longer available to them, as he needed to use that old the fight. Forsaken couldn't really heal anyone, and now he's trying to lone wolf it over on the payload. It's never going to work. Six seconds left. There's not going to be enough time here for FaZe to get towards the payload in the first map. It should have been a good one for FaZe, but it was a little bit better for NIP. And that's a case where you definitely can't take anything for granted here on Overwatch. Even though if we had stats, we'd probably be able to show that if you have three minutes left on Gibraltar, you probably have a greater than 70% chance of winning the map. There's still that 30% or whatever it might be of not finishing things out. So NIP able to clutch things out there towards the very end. And now... Uber, they're just one map away from winning it all. I mean, we saw yeah. FaZe had five minutes plus on a game, I think yesterday on Gibraltar, and they barely made it through. So it's kind of similar to the style before, but they put themselves in the best possible position to actually tie the map at least or get the win, and they weren't able to. I do think the pick from Zoms on to Tracer was pretty good, uh, but that last point is just pretty hard to take unless you can snowball through. 
The other thing that I think is really worth noting here as well, in terms of phase, is that they do have this track record of not being able to finish things off. I mean, you look back to the Route 66 Cup, which went on pretty recently, just this last weekend, where FaZe was doing very well against C9, and then they had something like three, if not four minutes to finish out Hollywood. They weren't yeah. able to finish out Hollywood. They ended up losing the game, and it put them in such a bad state that they ended up losing the next three maps as well. So for FaZe, there's definitely a problem finishing. There's really, there, the evidence continues to mount up. Well, I mean, yeah, the scenes yesterday were a little bit questionable. I mean, the the thing is, I think you already you're already put on out, CP. You, have, you can have a lot of time for that last point, but it is a long, long, long map. And the problem is, is that when you have three minutes going in, you're always going to back away from a fight if you lose one player because you're trying to be cautious. You don't want to give away all percentage. You don't want to give away free kills. But the problem is, is that teams can get so entrenched in this mindset of losing one player and then stopping fighting that they don't look for opportunities to try and trade that out and actually ways to sort of break back into a fight. And that's something that I think NIP have been able to, to do quite well with very little. So sometimes they're in like a 4v5 or 4v6 even, and one of their tanks gets a kill, and they'll hang around and they'll stay in that fight. And that actually gives them opportunities that other teams don't have available to them because they see that first kill come in, they realize it's a DPS player, and they go, well, I'm sorry, I'm not going to have any of that. So there's something to be said for sometimes trying to bite off a little bit more than you can chew because sometimes it does work out. Now, and that was it kind works of a... out more for NIP than other teams. Just to add on to that real quick is that it really comes down to Himsey. Himsey is able to grab pickoffs even as a fight is breaking down. There are multiple fights in that last uh, map where NIP actually did lose the first person, but Himsey was able to come back. I mean, one that stands out to me was at the very first point where NIP was in a rough shape and then Himsey suddenly comes back. I think I said, well, they're going to need heroics from Himsey. Guess what? Himsey immediately gets two pickoffs. They're able to fight it right back. That was kind of a must-win position for FaZe. Now they're down 2-0. That was kind of one of their home maps they needed to win. I mean, they're already you know, losing map from coming to the looters bracket. They pick Weijang, which is not a surprise. They finally were able to play a King of the Hill map against NIP. So I do favor them here to bring it back 2-1. But having to win against Hollywood and Route 66 after, it's going to be really rough. And they're going to need it to work coming out of the gate. So yes, finally Too Easy is going to match with the Road Dog and Shadow Berm going Reaper is probably the right decision here. Hey. Well, we'll have to see. I mean, yeah, too easy, Roadhog. Uh, we talked about FaZe trying to at least to some degree emulate the heavy tank compositions that we often see from NIP, and this is actually what we saw LDLC use um, to give them a little bit of leeway in a similar situation for themselves. We'll see if it works out too easy. I think his Roadhog's been quite good today. He's already going to find that first hook on the world's map, and that's going to be punished. He gets taken down, and already it's a, a 6v5. 65 to start things out. FaZe couldn't ask for anything more. Shadowburn just waiting for his opportunity to go even deeper. This isn't necessarily won yet here by FaZe, but anytime you start off with a pick like that, it's definitely very, very good. And they're just throwing things off. They're keeping control of the point. They're focusing on the objective more than anything else here. And they're saying, okay, MIP, you guys have to come to us now. Himsey, of course, came back to this fight. He's going to be doing just that. He will be looking for a pickoff. Himsey's so good at finding angles of hooks right behind the shield. Doesn't quite get there. In fact, too easy. Going to be top hog here. Gets on the Himsey, and that should set face for a full defense. Yeah, a very good start for too easy as well. When he could have hooked Fraggy in at a couple of occasions there, but he respected the threat that, I mean, that Himsey can create, and he waited to the Roadhog of the opposition, showed himself, and he ate a hook pretty much straight away. Now, I mean, we, we kind of talk a lot about NRP being weak on King of the Hill maps so much that it's almost become canon so far, but this is, yeah, been a very underwhelming start for them. But it's not been anything crazy. They've just been getting hooked by too easy. Well, the hook, counter hooks are on the way. Himsey gets to the start of this fight. Will be setting up Zappis and company as NIP storms right back onto the point, retaking it for their own and <laughs> looking for Lucio as a parting gift. Lucio not going to be able to escape Zappos' gun of justice towards the very end. And NIP now holding right back and all the situation relatively even between the two teams. Zombs will have a Graviton probably in the middle of this fight, which could turn the tides. But for now, NIP is in a pretty good position holding on. Yeah, credit to him actually to be so far ahead in Graviton Surge uh, generation there as well when it comes to his ultimate. Mappy's a long way away. Fraggy's going to be put to bed though there as well. Did have himself the nano boost, but again, the shield out from Back Fiction. Fraggy gets nothing for his Earth Shatter, but it gets too easy still. His uh, hammer managed to penetrate the shield, and Back Fiction going off the edge there. That's big from Fraggy. He even gave him a wave goodbye at the end of that one there, just to add insult to injury. And it will be NIP maintaining control here, at least flipping it back now in their favor. 
How in the world is Himsy still alive? He was near dead, had the honor grenade on him, it was all of 2 HP, and then Mafu, intentionally or not, got in front of him, shielded him with his body, and it bought just enough time for Zuppy to come in and heal him up to full. Himsy is a dead man walking right now, and probably couldn't be any happier for it. But this is a big deal for NIP. They're about to even things up in progress here in a moment, and they still have good position. Oh my goodness! That hook on the two easy. What in the world? Yeah, and uh, opening now as well. We're too easy falling first, and Zomba's falling second in the fight. All three tanks are down. Raucus just goes over the edge. He's like, this is pretty much a done deal, and all finished off. And Fracky always, always at the front. The fact is, if your Reinhardt is going to be aggressive and you're enabling him to be aggressive, I think I brought this up earlier on, but here, I really do want to give credit to Zappe, who obviously the newest player in this lineup has been very, very good on this Ana, constantly giving his tanks reason to be confident and actually be comfortable going forward like this. Graviton surges in from Afu, pulls in four, and NIP just swarming all over that. It's a great Graviton with even better fall through for NIP. 85% now, so this is going to be the last moment dash coming out here from FaZe. And given the percentage that they're at right now, they can't really waste much time. They're going to have to immediately throw their bodies onto it, and this is going to be a big opportunity for NIP. They can just drop the sound bear as they run in and make life very rough for FaZe. Shadowburn, you have to look for some real heroics here on this Death Blossom. Yeah, sound barrier, Zom's falling, Fact Fiction going down there as well. It's pretty much done now. We're going to have to see if there's any chance of Shadowburn. I mean, he's pulling out a bit of a performance there. He was breakdancing on the middle of the point, but there was absolutely no spectators, no audience. No one even cared. Now he's going to get taken down after the ultimates do time out. That was all that was available to phase there, and it wasn't enough. Good disengage from NIP. They'll take the first round. NIP with a great comeback there. I mean, in the beginning, it was looking all in favor of FaZe. FaZe sort of more comfortable with control point maps on the whole, at least that is the prevailing theory. But NIP... They were able to get a few pickoffs, retake the point, and it went much better for them from there. And I think one thing about NIP, if they do have some weird issues on control, you wouldn't think they would have it in the long term, just because Roadhog is historically been pretty good on control maps for getting control, for brawling out, because these maps do sort of degenerate into these longer team fights, and what better to have than have a Roadhog that can hook every six seconds and find people, especially when they're not always guaranteed to be behind a Reinhardt shield. Every time you can bring in every six seconds in any conversation about Roadhog, I'm a fan. Huge fan. <laughs> and that's Slasher's addition there to that thing. <laughs> Listen, I'm not opposed to mentioning the times on things when they're a little bit silly. I mean, I remember uh, Genji used to have the eight magic seconds on the Dragon Blade. Can you believe? Just be eight seconds. Oh my goodness, the hook though coming in from Himsy right away. Finds his man. Gonna force Shadowburn out pretty early here. He does get healed up. Wraith form though is gone, and Himsy getting revenge immediately. Grabs another hook! Himsy show is real right now. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair, uh, Shadowburn backed right up into Himsy. He didn't actually know that Himsy was set up towards the side, ready in a flanking location. So he kind of ran into that one. And then, of course, Himsy, well, he didn't even need to wait six magic seconds for the hook. He had it available because he didn't need to use it for Shadowburn wa walking into the scrap gun. So NIP going to have a dominating position here once more, and you take a look at their ults. This is the difference between this patch and last patch. Last patch, everyone have ults for this next fight. We have another fight here that at least starts out without ultimates being up. Maybe they come up in the middle of the fight, and Himsy right now, again, trying to be sneaky, going off in the flank, but I don't think FaZe is buying anything of what he is selling right now. They are well aware of where he is, but it doesn't matter! Finds Reaper once more! Yeah, Himsy's going to get hooked in there as well. He wasn't able, of course, quite to finish off Shadowburn there. 250 HP, that extra 50 makes a big difference. And so now it should be a bit of a switch back in favor of FaZe, or at least for the first time in this particular round. I mean, they lost too many key players early on in there as well. Mafu, Zappus, and Kainal were the last two to fall. But a very respectable 40% accrued here for NIP. They are very close to five ultimates coming into the next fight. A lot of ultimate power coming up here for NIP, and it's going to be rough for the defense of phase to deal with this. I mean, they're really going to need Zoms to land the Graviton of a lifetime, and they probably need a little bit of ultimate waste here from NIP, but the Graviton already in. It is all in here for NIP. Zappus finds his way to the top, just mowing people down. No one on him whatsoever. The real damage, though, gonna be done by Fraggy, just swinging the hammer onto all those poor souls stuck in that whirling vortex. Yeah, and the Bardic Grenade was almost enough from Raucus. Almost, but then Zappos also was lending his damage in over the top. He got mana boosted, I actually think, with that attack visor. That uh, perch position is obviously super strong right now uh, for Soldier 76. It used to be fun and gimmicky for McCree to use a Deadeye from, but Soldier 76 can consistently deal direct damage from that position right there. So if he can get established there, especially if he has an ultimate combo, there's nowhere to hide. 
All right, Nimsy right now holding on to that whole hog. Could be in the mood to break a Reinhardt shield sooner than later. Graviton is out, but look at this whole hog. Can push everyone back. Going to limit the amount of fall through on this Graviton. Himsy just ruining the engagement of FaZe. And now he's looking for the cleanup hooks, and he gets them. Oh, Frankie is so intelligent, by the way. I mean, I don't know if it was communicated to him. He got hooked in first, right? He got shielded up by Mafu. And then he turned around at just the right time as Shadowburn was trying to get some back shots in. Shadowburn thought he had him. He thought he was unaware, but no. Someone must have communicated that to him. It's 90% now. And there's like a couple ultimates to work with FaZe, but this has been a very deplorable start for them. They haven't much to work with. Frankie gets knocked down, but he's been shielded up here. The whole hog for too easy. It might just take more than that. Might even require the farm itself. As back fishing gets hooked in by Himsy and killed. And again, overtime coming through, but FaZe, nowhere to be seen. FaZe falling apart right now, and we've seen plenty of reverse sweeps over the last few days. FaZe now in that situation. They are down two maps to zero right now because of NIP's advantage coming in from winners, and we are going to need a pause. Restart required by FaZe or something along those lines, but still, NIP two rounds to zero right now. This is their match point, series point, tournament point. You NIP know, gotta be feeling themselves right now. Yeah, they are. I mean, FaZe is doing everything I think they should be doing. They're running Reaper, they're running Roadhog themselves. You know, NIP is just better at running this comp right now. Plus, they're able to put in Soldier as the one DPS in there, which is probably the most OP DPS hero right now. I don't think that FaZe really has an answer. I don't really think anybody has an answer. It's not that all the DPS heroes got buffed. And none of the tanks already got buffed except for D.Va. The issue is, as I mentioned early on in, in this tournament, is that picks are now so important. And Roadhog probably is the best pick potential in the game besides long range snipers. And because he has 600 health, then a instant kill on six second cooldown. There is no better <laughs> hero to do that with. And he is the probably the best Roadhog in the world. I am not, um, I'm confident in saying that. I mean, Harbu is really good. And there are Korean players that are really oh. good, but Himzi is just on another level. And him playing in this this team and this comp is just very difficult to go against. Realistically, the problem with Harblu, and I'm sorry, this is a case where you know how there's skill decay on ladder when you don't play for a whole lot? Well, in tournaments, there's definitely some form of caster decay where complexity has been... I'm not going to use the word dodging per se, but they haven't been participating in a lot of these tournaments that have been out despite getting invites, so... It's been a while since we've seen complexity in the game, and when complexity has been off the face of the earth for a really long time, it's hard to go, well, don't forget about Heart Blue on Roadhog, where it's true, in the past he's had a great Roadhog, but complexity, they've been missing so many tournaments recently, it's sort of out of sight, out of mind. They're a dream hack, aren't they, complexity? They are. Yeah, so yeah, they, they are, are but I do wonder about their prep, because uh, they got an invite to both Vegas and DreamHack. So they are in two major tournaments, but they've been off the radar for so long in tournaments like this, it sort of makes you wonder because if you're confident in your team, you'd think you would go in and participate in some of these. And for now, they've just sort of not been interested. And I mean, honestly, I think back in general, even when the weeklies were still a thing where you had half participation, whereas teams were winding down all the rest, Complexity was one of the first teams to sort of back out as well. So there's something in there. I don't know if... The, they just don't see the point in tournaments, aside from the big ones now, or they just don't have the greatest practice schedule, but it's just been weird to me because they've just been sort of missing in action for a while. I can say that they have been practicing. I've talked to some people that have been scrimming them, and they are really good because okay. Har Power Blue is really solid on Roadhog. It's been the biggest issue for everyone that I've talked to. Yeah, I mean, and that's always been one of the defining features of that particular team is, is Har Blue's Roadhog, but... I think, to be fair, he's he's come a long way. I mean, we, we saw him at Gamescom and he was playing the Roadhog. It was like, I need to carry my team. And you could see a lot of his behavior and positioning reflected that. I think we've seen improvements uh, on that team since then. I mean, I mean just to, just as a quick shield, the dream hack as well. It's going to be interesting to see uh, quite a few of these actual teams make the trip there. And even the BYOC teams, a few who we've actually already seen in this tournament. I'm I'm told that LDLC and Mouse Sports will be attending. So um, that'll, be, that'll be fantastic be. to see if they could sort of make their way through and uh, yeah, get in obviously in towards the main event but we're going to be back there nice over talk boys but it may well be the last round here if NIP are looking as strong as they are so far Hello. alrighty so NIP in the, in the driver's seats right now looking to finish off the tournament strong phase looking to not go quietly into that good night win around extend the map and look for the miracle the dream they need the reverse sweep on multiple levels here they not only need to win three in a row in this map they need to win the rest of the maps here in the series 
so if FaZe were to bring this back, it would be one of the most epic comebacks of all time, but it's going to be very, very difficult. Well, it'll also be 5 uh, a.m. by the end of it, so the worst part is I wouldn't be able to do it just as we could cast him, but we'll see if we get there. It's uh, still very much a conditional thing. Put a big old asterisk next to it is NRP, uh, we've got no reason to expect or to even think that they would struggle, even on this round, let alone the rest of the maps are in the pool, which some which benefit them, Hollywood, Cop, Cop. So, damage now coming down from Zappos oh. already, 38%, nicely done. Shadowburn fighting Gimsy, Craggy falling as well. Okay. The boop off onto Fraggy there was the stuff. Legends Forsaken picks up another boop. Dropping the beat, dropping people to their depths. Forsaken having himself quite an opening here on Li Zhang. And this is for a contribution. The phase is going to need out everyone here if they want to stop this NIP juggernaut. I like it. I like a bit of boop action there as well. Forsaken is one of those players you can never put him in the corner as a support. Uh, he always demands a bit of attention. Um, flashy, maybe, but the reason is, is because he's actually getting himself on that kill feed as well and doing it in creative ways, and we enjoy that. Forsaken again, looking dangerous, looking for the boot. Fraggy, this time swatting away, saying, not today, son, I've got a job to do. He needs to go back to this point. Hook does not connect for Himsey there as well, but two easies does. Mathu gets caught out, able to back away, but there's a sound barrier coming in either phase. Sound bearer on the way, Shadowburn actually has to reload though, so he can't take as much advantage as he would like, but Factor Fiction taking out Zeppi, FaZe can play this a little bit on the slow side, Nano Boost comes out, and Shadowburn just going to leisurely walk through and left click anyone he can, and that's about all you can do on Reaper when you get a Nano Boost now, he lost his speed, he's no longer just able to run through at Mach 10, he just has to sort of, eh, you're kind of near me, I guess I'll throw some shots into you. Bit unfortunate there as well, Zappe getting caught out by NIP. He was actually on the outside of the rotunda or pergola or whatever you want to call it. Um, and he ran straight into Fact Fiction who said, oh, I'm just going to kill you, went swinging for him. So losing the Anna at the start of the fight, definitely not a great way, not a great omen. Another hook from Too Easy, another miss hook from Himsey there. We talked about the Roadhog head to head. It's not about killing each other, it's about getting hooks. And so far, FaZe have been far better at that thanks to Too Easy. Too easy has been having himself a really good round, and so is Factor Fiction, just getting very good control and good earth shatters, and just putting himself in good positions for straight up swing the hammer. And it's put NIP in a bit of a pickle. NIP now down to their final push. They will have a sound bearer, they're gonna have earth shatter. Very well could have a graviton layer inside fight, so they do have some tools to turn this around. But Uber, if they win this next fight, they're gonna have to hold for the rest of the map. So the path for NIP in this round can be very tough indeed. But Fraggy right now, walking forward, has earth shatter at the ready, just looking for his opportunity to drop the hammer. That hammer's oh, gonna be dropping soon, is it? 98%. Another oh no, 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 hammer down into the pit, he goes. Too yeah. easy. Unbelievable. I'm freaking believable. Fraggy goes down. I mean, there's no chance here as well. NRP got completely shot out here. And as well, there was another very, very big boop coming out from Forsaken there as well. He sent Himsy going over the edge straight away. That's scary. If you see that Lucio hurtling towards him, you give him respect. Uh, Forsaken did fantastic job. I think like four environmental kills at least on that stage alone. Uh, demanding some uh, attention. No doubt about it. Dreams Sometimes I wonder if Lucios aren't aggressive enough for boops, particularly on these stages. I feel like the Lucio that actually does some of the best work in terms of balancing real aggressiveness with not, never really dying is probably Adam on C9. Adam on C9 is one of those things where you never really call him out too much because he never really dies. And then he just has moments where it's like, oh yeah, Adam just booped this guy off. He's just like, he finds moments, speed boosts in, and gets the knockoff. And it requires a really excellent game sense for Lucio to do that consistently, but it's definitely possible. I think Zabe does that as well uh, in a big way. Um, definitely like, definitely something in his arsenal that he can sort of produce for us, although we haven't seen much of Kala in a while. But anyway, on towards the point here. Frankie up in front first. Who's surprised? This time, Himsey starts off the round well. It could be a good omen for NIP now as he gets to look on towards Raucus and Fact Fiction falls to Zappi. And don't forget, NIP dominated last time we were on this particular map and Himsey getting back to work where he left off last time they were on the night market. Effectively setting up for three kills. NIP going to get first control here very dominantly. And you take a look at the L charge, they're well rewarded where they're much more on the way than phases here. So everything going the way of NIP and they're able to get in front of this doorway and make things really rough for FaZe as they try to re-establish. And they'll come in over the top here. FaZe will attempt to drop down on top of Fraggy, who charges out. He realizes, actually, I'm a little bit too overextended. He gets away, got shielded, and now he can come back in. Raucus went very low, had to retreat to the back lines to potentially reduce his healing in the next few moments. And as a result, Shadowburn, pushing forward, gets picked up by Zappus. He didn't have the support he needed. It's not really anyone's fault that that happened, but the Anna needed to be in the action. She was too low to compete. 
Our shadow coming awesome. down here from Fraggy. Fraggy so deep once more. I love how aggressive Fraggy can be and still getting away with it. It's been the stuff of beauty. MIP so confident on their aggressive tank play. They're going to take the fight. 40% right now, Uber. And they got to be feeling pumped. They're just three team fights away. Maybe even two from taking the first EU Alienware monthly melee. NIP on a roll. Yeah, I mean, and let's be fair, they actually haven't dropped a map uh, in this bracket stage at all. So they've been looking pretty darn strong. Hook comes in though, too easy. Doesn't connect it, but Shadowbear manages to find Hinty, so at least the enemy Roadhog's off the plate. Can't find the hook, at least make sure you're the top hog, or the boss hog, as it were. And now, will be a pushback in for Face here. They open that fight up well. Earth Shadow was committed, Sound Barrier was also used, but to be fair, that's reasonably decent value. Ultwise, all economy, that's pretty good trades going in here where they didn't have to use everything. They used a few significant ultimates. They still have some tools for the next fight and they're going to need them. At 64%, NIP is going to really be applying the pressure should they retake this point. So for phase, they just want to hold this the rest of the map if possible. And it's going to require smart ult usage. And we'll take a look at Shadowburn. He wanted to get to the corner, wasn't able to get there in time. He's just going to take a little bit of cover here and look to move right in. Lucio can give him a speed boost when he's ready. And that's what phase is waiting for right now. Shadowburn holding, waiting. And once Forsaken is right, he's going to speed boost him in. Whole Hog comes out here as well. Now, this should normally signal a disengage for NIP, but Hims actually responds with his own Whole Hog. Graviton Surge comes in. That shield's been broken. Fraggy gets himself into the mix. It's a, I guess it's a cat among the pigeons, as you would like to put it. As Himsy hooks on the Shadow Burn, and now NIP get to sit back in control. They've given 46% over towards FaZe here. But I've got a nice little ultimate bank to work with, and Zombs dies a little bit out of cadence with the rest of his team. So a couple extra seconds, that means a lot when the stakes are as high as they are right now, ZP. Absolutely, and NIP, they read Shadowburn like a book there. Kindle was ready, booped him back, avoided most of the damage, and Himsy was there for the finish. So Shadowburn telegraphed that death boss a little bit too much. Now NIP, one team fight away, Uber, and they will be your champions. Groudson Surge coming in here from the offense. Himsy going to whiff that hook to start things off, but it's Mafu taking down too easy early on. A two to one advantage here from NIP. Hook about to be back up once more. Zom's not able to stand, and NIP at 96%. They have gone the team wipe they're looking for. GG is called. They are your first Alienware monthly melee EU champions, and they look dominant the whole way through. Yeah, that's a safe to say, I think. You know, we saw NIP with a couple moments where perhaps pause for thought was required, but we spent so much time saying how King of the Hill is, you know, maybe not a, a, a great sort of game type of theirs, and oh, this, this draft sort of benefits a little bit more towards phase, but NIP don't care for those kind of predictions here. You can see that they are just a cut above the rest. Even if we know they don't prefer to play King of the Hill, they're good enough to be able to take down phase on a map that's not their best. So, Rod, again, you are our resident phase expert. What do we think about phase going forward? Because phase, they fell to NIP here today, but you take a look at the events that are coming up. They have a lot of important events going on that they're signed up for. What is it that they're lacking right now in terms of con consistency? Because we know that when they're at their best, they can threaten the very best. And yet, recently, they have just had this issue where they don't always bring their A game and they have trouble going through an entire tournament at a really high level. If I were to pinpoint anything, and I think this is for a lot of teams, it is the depth of their hero pool. And I keep saying this over and over again, but if you don't have Shadowburn on Genji, what do you put him on? He's obviously not as good of a Reaper as he is on Genji. And when you're going against these 